So we want to understand how we choose the indicators for our titration reaction. Now, indicators are simply weak acids or weak bases that change color depending on if they are in an acidic medium or a basic medium. Now, I'm going to put a table here with the kinds of indicators that we have. And you will notice that those indicators are effective in a very small range of pH. Now, there are different kinds of indicators on the table here, but out of them, I've chosen two for which we're going to use to explain this um, question. Now, the first one is methyl orange. And as you can see here, methyl orange is effective within a pH range of 3.2 to 4.4. And the second one is phenylethylene. And this is effective within a pH range of 8.2 and 10. So what we want to do is we want to see these three examples that we have here and see which indicators are effective for which kind of neutralization reaction. So let's explore the graphs that we have here. Now, these graphs are simply our titration plots. Now, all it says is the plot of our volumes of the acids and the bases that take part in the neutralization reaction on the x-axis. And on the y-axis, we have the pH value of the solution. Now, we know that 7 represents the pH value for neutral compounds, and any value below 7 represents acidic compounds. And the lower the number, the more acidic the solution is. And any value higher than 7 represents basic compounds. And the higher the number, the more basic the compound is. Now, what happens here is, for this first example, we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base. Now, strong acids such as hydrochloric acid reacting with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide. Now, for strong acids, we know that the um, pH value is low, very close to 0 or 1. And so that's what we have here. So what happens is, as, as you add more and more base and the volume increases, the solution tends away from acidic towards the neutral point, up on, and until it gets to this point, which we have indicated as 3.5 here. So at this point, the titration finishes, and there's this sharp rise in pH value. Now, if you continue to add more base to your solution, what happens is the, the solution becomes very basic. Now, this vertical line you have here is when, indicates when the titration actually ends. So our indicators will only work across this vertical line here. Our indicators will not work here, neither will they work here. They will only work in this particular range here. Now, this low pH value here indicates a strong acid, and this high pH value here indicates that it's a strong base that we get from reaction. So the midway point between the midway point between these two points here is actually called the equivalence point. The equivalence point to the point is the point where the number of moles of acids is essentially the same as the number of moles of bases in this in the solution. And for strong acids reacting with a strong base, we can see that the equivalence point is at seven about seven. Now, so how do we choose the best indicators for this reaction? Now, we had mentioned earlier that methyl orange only works when the pH is within 3.2 and 4.4. So if we look at this graph here, 3.2 will be somewhere around here and 4.4 will be somewhere around here, let's say. Now, we can see that within this range, we can see that, that that range also falls between the vertical line that we have here. So methyl orange will work in this case. Now, what about phenylthylene? Now, we had mentioned that phenylthylene is active within the range of 8.2, which we can say is somewhere around here, and 10. 10 is somewhere around here. And we can see that in this case, phenylthylene will also work for this reaction. So when you have a strong acid and a strong base reacting with each other, there's a wide range of indicators that you can use. But what happens when a strong acid reacts with a weak base? Now, a strong acid like hydrochloric acid reacting with a weak base such as ammonia. Now, we start with our strong acid again. We see that the pH value is still very low here, which indicates a strong acid. But we see that at the end of our titration here, we actually have a low pH number closer to 7 than it is to 14. And that's because at the end of our reaction, we would have a weak base if we continue to add the, the base to the reaction. And the midway point between these two points in this case is actually less than seven. So when a strong acid reacts with a weak base, our equivalent point is less than seven. So here will be less than seven. Now, how do we choose our indicators for this reaction? Now, again, we go to our methyl orange and we see that it's active between 3.2 and 4.4. 4. 
Now, 3.2 is going to be somewhere here. And 4.4 will be somewhere here. Now, we see that methyl orange is going to be active because it falls within that vertical line. But what about phenothylene? In this case, we see that phenol 8.2 is going to be somewhere around here and 10 is going to be somewhere around here. We see that phenothylene wouldn't work in this case because this zone here doesn't, it doesn't overlap with the, the vertical line that we had set to look out for. So in this case, while methyl orange is a good choice of indicator, phenothylene isn't. And finally, let's look at a case where we have a weak acid, such as a nitrous acid, reacting with a strong base such as sodium hydroxide. Now, in this case, well, it's a weak acid, so we expect that the pH value of the acid is going to be closer to 7, as we have it here. And because it's a strong base, the pH value of the final base that we would have will be closer to 14, very high. So we can see that it's shifted upwards here. And we would also notice that the equivalence point here is greater than 7. So in this case, the equivalence point is greater than 7. Now, let's... See, let's choose the best indicator for this kind of reaction. Now, if we look at methyl orange again, 3.2, which is somewhere around here, and 4.4, which is somewhere around here. And as you can see in this case, the, this range falls outside of the vertical line we had said we should look out for that indicates the end of the um, titration reaction. So methyl orange would not work for this case. But what about phenolthylene? Now, phenolthylene is effective between 8.2 and 10. And as we can see, phenolthalene works perfectly in this case. So in summary, when we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base like we have in this case, there's a wide range of indicators that we can use. But when we have a strong acid reacting with a weak base like we have in the case in the middle here, the indicators we can use will be limited to those with a low pH value, such as methyl orange in this case. And for strong bases and weak acids like we have here, would have to use an indicator that has a high pH value.